Welcome back to Immunology, and today's sub-module is going to be the Immunological Memory. Generating memory helper T's and B cells. Memory B and helper T cells can be produced efficiently even when no immune system cells have been infected by an attacker. In helper T cells, the dendritic cells are the first to ingest the pathogen or fragments of the attacker. They travel to nearby lymph nodes, they use class 2 MHC molecules to present the peptides, and the helper T recognizes it to then activate into memory cells. In the B cell system, the B cell receptors recognize a fragment of the pathogen inside some secondary lymphatic tissue like the lymph nodes. And, and if T cells are available, then some of the resulting B cells will differentiate into the memory cells. On the right side, you can see kind of a pathway of showing you how this common lymphoid progenitor cell has the fate of becoming into a B cell or a T cell. If it becomes B cell, it can clone into the plasma cell and produce antibodies or the memory B cell for later response. T cells could become the cytotoxic T cell, CTL, or the helper T cells. Antibody titer is a measurement of immunological memory. The primary response is the measurable response of the antibody production to the first exposure of an antigen. There is a lag or latent phase, which is an initial period of no detectable antibody that lasts about three to six days, sometimes even to a week. And this includes the activation, detection, proliferation, differentiation of an antigen. Production of the antibodies usually starts within one to two weeks. Subsequent exposures and secondary responses are much shorter than the primary response due to that memory lymphocyte. It will then generate a larger amount of antibody and the antibody levels rise rapidly, particularly the IgG antibodies. Over here's a graph showing you on the x-axis the days of exposure, 25 days, and the y-axis the serum antibody titer. In both cases, you have a peak amount of IgMs roughly about 12 days in, and then about 16 days in you have a peak amount of IgGs. However, in the secondary response, you can see less than five days, you already have a skyrocketing amount of IgGs, at least three times the amount, and the IgMs are also elevated a little earlier. It doesn't increase as amount, but it does elevate to the peak level right within the 10 day mark. So the primary phase starts with the IgM being expressed, while the secondary phase starts with the IgGs. The difference in the primary and secondary is due to the memory B cell response. Antibodies are much more rapidly produced in a secondary response. So the goal of a vaccine is to get your body into that secondary response in case you get exposed to a pathogen. Over here, you can see again that the secondary exposure to the antigen, you have a base higher level of the IgGs and the amount of antibody that you can generate over the shorter period of time is much higher. Notice that the IgMs are pretty consistent in the quantity. However, it does get created earlier in that phase. 